there are so many different types of vegetables that you can grow. Some people tend to stick with a few conventional types of vegetables, or at least what would be considered conventional or traditional in their culture and climate. Other growers really enjoy trying out a wide range of different types and varieties of vegetables, sometimes just for the novelty of it all. I tend to be somewhere in the middle, where a reasonably diverse range of different types of vegetables can be found in my gardens, and looking at all the different crops that I tend to grow these days, it seems that almost half of them are from the brassica or cabbage family of plants. But it wasn't always that way. When I first started growing vegetables, I hardly grew any brassicas at all. I think mainly because I grew up in an environment that had much warmer summers and significantly colder winters, and I wanted to prioritize space in the gardens for the types of crops that I was used to growing in that climate. But after years of growing in Ireland, I've been gradually making more and more space in the gardens for this diverse brassica family of crops, partially because they grow so well in this climate. But also because I've been getting a lot better at growing them and have learned how to enjoy eating them. And I've discovered that they can be really productive and very useful crops to grow. I think the first brassica plant that I grew was probably kale and I still grow a lot of it. I usually grow a cavolo narrow kale variety that produces long dark leaves for harvesting in the summer and autumn. And at least one other variety that I grow for producing large leaves over winter. And this crop is really hardy and frost tolerant, although I do find the winter winds can really damage the leaves. More recently, I've been growing a red Russian variety of kale as a cut and come again crop, producing quicker harvests of smaller, more tender leaves. And I've also been growing more conventional cabbages for a while now, but only recently seem to be getting consistently good quality heads, which can actually be really productive. Although we tend not to think of cabbage as a leaf crop, they are apparently the same species of plant as kale, only bred to have curled in leaves that tightly pack into each other, forming a dense head rather than opening up like a kale plant. Another odd variation of this same plant are Brussels sprouts, which were bred to form tiny cabbages out of the side shoots of each of the leaf nodes. It is interesting to see the similar side shoots of the kale plant, and even inside the cabbage plant, and I wonder how the plant breeders all those years ago were able to get the Brussels sprouts plant and the cabbage plants to do what they do. But what I find even more amazing is that broccoli and cauliflower are apparently also variations of the same plant species. We grow these specific varieties to produce what is essentially a very large immature flower stalk. I can start to see this type of flower stalk in crops like purple sprouting broccoli, which produces shoots that I generally harvest in the early spring when there are still tightly packed immature flower clusters. And these plants are not far off kale plants that I also occasionally grow to produce tender flowering shoots in the early spring. I can see how these more open flower clusters of the kale plant relate to the more tightly packed clusters of the sprouting broccoli plants. And the larger central cluster of the sprouting broccoli is not too far off the larger head of the calabrese broccoli that have become much more common. So I can see how all these relate, but the cauliflower head seems to be another thing entirely. I grow a few of these different forms of this one brassica species, and I'm gradually getting better at consistently producing a good quality crop with each of them. In addition to this wide selection of large brassica plants that produce leaves and flower shoots in many different forms, I've also been growing an increasing amount of other leafy brassica family plants. The one that I grow the most of is rocket or arugula, which is a really fast growing and potentially abundant crop, producing edible salad leaves within a month or two depending on the season. I've also been growing a few of the huge selection of other brassica greens, including mizuna, mabuna, and different types of mustard leaves, all of which have hot, peppery flavors. But it's taken me a while to figure out how best to grow these plants with such interesting range of leaf shapes and colors. I used to give each individual plant a fair amount of space and harvested individual leaves one at a time. But this wasn't very efficient in terms of effort or space in the gardens, and I think the problem was that I was expecting to be able to harvest from these plants over a long period of time, similar to kale. But I've had much better success growing them in fairly dense rows, as a cut and come again crop, where I can get two, three, or possibly four cuts from the plants before they start to bolt or produce flowers. When I treat them as a fast crop like this, only expecting to harvest from each batch for a short period of time, and to sow a succession of batches, I have been able to get much better quality and tastier leaves with higher yields that are a lot easier to harvest. 
A lot of the quality of these types of salad leaves seems to come down to the speed of growth, and the faster they grow the better. And the same seems to be the case with some of the root vegetables in the brassica family plants, though not all of them. The most common example of this is the salad radish, which is famous for its speed of growth, the bright red color, and crisp spicy flavor, which many people like and many people really dislike. Radishes haven't been a staple part of my garden planting plans or our dinner plate in the past, but recently I've been growing a lot more of them with really good success, especially in the spring. I don't have a lot of experience growing the other types of radishes that have been bred to produce much bigger roots, but with really good growing conditions and lots of water, these small salad radishes can grow extraordinarily quickly. The same can be said for the hybrid variety of turnip that I've been growing for the past few years. I'm amazed at how abundant these plants can be, especially as a spring crop in the polytunnel, where within two months they can produce a great crop of tender roots and edible leaves. And as we can eat the whole plant, the yield from this crop is incredible, probably more than any other crop that I grow, and in a very short period of time. I have tried growing other varieties of turnips before, and didn't feel that they were really worth it, though perhaps I should give the different varieties another chance. But I need to clarify that these turnips are very different from the larger, yellow-fleshed winter roots that are often referred to as turnip, or Irish turnip, or rutabaga, but I call them swede. This very different root crop is a high-value staple of winter months, and often used very differently in the kitchen. But in all cases, these brassica family root vegetables are among the most productive in the garden, taking advantage of the tendency of these plants to store lots of energy and nutrients in the roots before starting to produce seeds. There is another brassica crop that takes advantage of the tendency of some of this diverse family of plants to store energy and nutrients in the thick stem. This can be seen in the stalk of the broccoli or cauliflower, or cabbage, and by cutting open the stem of a kale or Brussels sprout plant, the inside of which can be reasonably tender and sweet. And this tendency seems to have been bred into one of the more exotic looking vegetables, the kohlrabi, which develop a swollen base or bulb, which is apparently the stem rather than the swollen root that forms the turnip or radishes. And I think the flavor of this vegetable is closer to that of the cauliflower stalk, but it has a crisp juiciness similar to radish. This odd plant has become one of my favorites to grow, especially as a fast-growing spring crop, although it can be a bit tricky to get right to grow the full bulb that isn't split or become fibrous. And this season I'm also trying to grow a variety that is bred to develop a huge bulb that is meant for overwintering storage. So, I grow some brassicas as large plants to harvest mature leaves, some as individual leaves, and some as tightly packed bundles, big and small. Other plants I grow to harvest the immature flower shoots, either as large central clusters or as numerous side shoots. Other brassicas I plant and manage to harvest a succession of fast-growing tender salad leaves, which can also be cooked. I grow some fast-growing brassica roots, which can also produce edible leaves, and some slower-growing roots for storage. And I also grow a strange variation of the plant for its tasty swollen stem. And another version of growing brassicas that I've been recently experimenting with is to grow dense sowings of seeds to harvest them as microgreens. No doubt there are other ways to grow and eat these crops, as the whole plant seems to be edible, even if some parts are a lot more fibrous and less tasty. The leaves of the cauliflower plant are an interesting example of this, and if I wanted to eat all of them, I can double the yield of the plant. And then there are all the other types of brassicas that I haven't even begun to explore. With all the various types of brassicas that I can grow, they could easily take up a large part of my gardens, and I do find it difficult to fit them all in. It would be great to be able to grow a succession of different varieties of cauliflower and broccoli so that I could harvest these popular vegetables throughout most of the year. And I could do the same thing with the cabbages and different varieties of kale, but I just don't have enough room for all of these plants in the 100 square meter size of the gardens that I'm experimenting with. And it takes some effort and planning to work in a good succession of rocket and other greens so that it can have a more consistent supply of these fast-growing plants, and the same can be true with the fast-growing turnip and radishes. It seems that I often end up in a feast or famine type of scenario, where I have way too much to handle at one time, and then hardly anything for a long while. 
At least with the rutabaga or swede, I can get a large yield that stores well, and I hope that this will be the same with the new variety of kohlrabi that I'm trying. I could easily see this diverse family of crops taking over a larger and larger section of my garden each year, and that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, especially if we changed our diet as well. But that would mean abandoning some of the key elements of crop rotation that I've been trying to maintain in order to reduce the risk of problematic disease issues. And these plants are more susceptible to pests than most of the other crops that I grow. So, while I'd like to be able to grow even more of this amazingly diverse and productive family of crops, there are limits and constraints that I'm not sure I want to push too far, at least in order to be able to maintain a certain amount of resilience in the gardens. And I still want to grow a lot of the other types of crops as well.